Seth freaking Rollins, welcome to San Diego Comic-Con. Fresh off the Mattel panel, you're getting a new figure based on Hell in a Cell. That's incredible. You ever think you'd have this many uh, figures of yourself floating around in the world? I never thought I would have a single one figure floating to myself out in the world. So uh, this is beyond exciting. The fact that I get to pay homage to the late, great Dusty Rhodes and be immortalized in action figure form, it's a big double whammy in a good way. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. You've earned it. Uh, let's talk about Comic-Con real quick. Are you? Is there anything on the floor or anything at Comic-Con that gets you fired? up you're like all right that's that's a cool collectible that's a cool thing i'd like to see i don't know what's on the floor i've never been to a comic con i this is not my world y'all i don't have i don't like i ain't got time for this world i don't like chelsea green's out there talking about her husband having like this wild collectible yeah. room and johnny gargano knows everything there is to know like I, where do you find the time with the schedule to know all these things and to have all these things. I have no clue. I didn't got the time, man. So I would love to go down on the floor, peruse, see what's available, yeah. and then take my pick. But uh, I, I have no idea what's down there. We'll do a little tour after this. No big deal. I'm sure it'll be fine. We won't get swamped. Oh, you know. Yeah, no, we'll be fine. <laughs> I, I'm very uh, I'm nondescript as it is, yeah, yeah. you know. Let's let's talk a little wrestling, man. One thing uh, recently, Cody. I mean, you are you're the top of the game right now. You're the world heavyweight champion. You're on Monday Night Raw. Cody says you two are kind of competing for the face of Monday Night Raw. I want to hear your thoughts on uh, on a comment like that. Well, I think he's absolutely correct, and I think there's a lot of guys who would argue that they're the faces of Monday Night Raw. Cody would be one of them. Drew McIntyre just returned. He'd love to be one of them. You got uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn as tag team champions who, you know, main evented one of the nights of WrestleMania this year. They would have an argument, and I think that's what's going to make Monday Night Raw very exciting for a long time to come is that you've got so many guys at the top of their game vying for the top spot. I mean, you're at the top of the game at a point where wrestling is kind of like reaching a new peak. I mean, this is the best storytelling, the best characters, the best performers I feel like we've had in decades, and you're at the top of that game. But, I mean, along that roster of characters, there's so much talent. How do you think WWE and the storytelling and the characters and the performance and everything, how do you think it's gotten to this point? What all goes into that? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's everybody. Everybody's just kind of coming together at the right time. You've got the male and female superstars uh, on both brands that are just excelling. You've got the writing crew. You've got the production team. You've got the right leadership in place. Like, everybody is just kicking into gear at the right time. And that just doesn't happen. That's just a synergy that you don't have all the time. And so we are living in the best timeline for professional wrestling. No questions. I totally agree with you. My last question for you, dude, I can't wait. I'm going to be out in Detroit at SummerSlam. I know you and Finn have a match where for Finn, this is like a, a redemption match or he, he's out for revenge. Is there a, a, a moment in your career, a match in your career that you would feel similarly like you'd love to revisit that and get another shot at it? Yeah, Roman Reigns. Uh, the last time Roman Reigns and I met was at the Royal Rumble. Um, I won the match. I don't know if anybody remembers because he demolished me with the chair, wouldn't let go of the choke when he was supposed to. Um, there's a lot there, a lot of unfinished business there. And so I think that's a matchup that needs to be explored down the line. We are both right dead center in our primes, a long way to go. I'm sure we'll get there. Who knows when? Dude, I was there. I thought that pedigree was going to be the end of it. Should have been the end of it. Hell yeah, I'm rooting for it, dude. Well, congratulations. Keep it up. Thank you so much for talking. Thank you. Mick, it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. As somebody who grew up a huge wrestling fan, this is an honor to talk to you. So thank you. Welcome to Comic-Con. Oh, it's great to be here. Right here at Comic-Con, this is my first one in 10 years. Ten, I bet it looks a little different. Well, right now all I've seen are the hallways. <laughs> yeah, uh, we are. <laughs> but I, actually, I was actually at Comic-Con in 1999 when it was not yet a big deal. So it's amazing to see how much it's grown over the years. So let's look back at 1999 and even 10 years ago. What were some of the things at Comic-Con, I mean, whether it was collectibles or toys on the floor, action figures, did, did you, were you able to walk around? And I was able, yeah, I was able to walk around uh, after I did my thing. And my thing that year was as part of uh, a comic book that had been put out. Uh, so the, the the con was, I guess it had been running, but it wasn't get the uh, iconic cultural uh, um, event that it's turned out to be. It is, it is like the Super Bowl of the summer for geeks. I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> it's our WrestleMania, if you will. Oh, that's great, that's great. Okay, so listen, let's talk a little bit of wrestling here. Uh, I have some fun questions for you. Kurt Angle recently said he would have loved to wrestle you when you were both in your prime. For you, who is a guy you would have loved to get to dance in there with, with both of you in your prime that you never got a shot Kurt, at? Kurt would have been one of them. Yeah. And you know, to his credit, Kurt carried me through a couple of pretty good matches when I was well past my prime. But, oh, <laughs> man, I would have loved to have gotten in there and tangled it up with Kurt and been able to incorporate a little bit of his style and threw a little Foley uh, brawling style into it. I think it would have been great. 
Uh, I've long said that I would have loved to wrestle a guy like Ricochet when he first came in because I think sometimes it's that first feud. There's something to be said for the slow build, mm -hmm. and that's good, but I, there's also like just that powder keg of emotion that explodes when you can get a heel at the top of his game almost forcing you mm -hmm. to uh, appreciate someone's attempt to stay alive. Dude, Ricochet taking the sock would be hilarious to me, man. That I, guy, that guy. This is pre-Socko. Pre this is okay, this is okay. old school brawling Cactus okay, Jack. Cactus Jack coming yeah, out. And by the time I got the sock, I was on borrowed time. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, everyone, I mean, one of the things everybody talks about when they think of you, they think about your career, is that Hell in the Cell moment. And I just watched you and Taker watch that bag, yeah. and it was awesome. But what is a match you had that you think maybe because it's it's bittersweet, that moment is so iconic, there's like a match or a moment yeah. you wish got a little bit more love if we revisited it? Oh, there are some good ones there. Uh, Over the Edge with Steve Austin was a really good one in just the month before the Cell match. Evil dude love uh, doesn't get as much love as he should. Um, and maybe even the boiler room brawl, if you can accept that there's no commentary and it's a cinematic match but with only one camera, but there are no edits. Yeah. Uh, so it was a hard-fought brawl that I don't think was... Uh, appreciated. Man, I remember watching that. I watched it in the kitchen of my grandparents' house, and that was uh, that was a hell of a match. Dude, it's, it's interesting that the hardcore championship is not around anymore. So speaking of like hardcore stuff, though, like the Boiler Room Brawl, yeah. who do you think right now, if there was still a hardcore belt, who do you think deserves to wear something like that in 2023? Let me think back. You know, you could find uh, like a wild card, a guy like Otis, say, who has got, he's got the humorous side to him. But maybe he could assert himself as the guy uh, who can find cool stuff to use anywhere. I'm going with Otis. Man, that Viking Rules match the other day was incredible. Cool, right? It was it was a lot of fun to watch, as hardcore matches should be. And I think that that was uh, yeah that Otis could have a future in hardcore wrestling. I love it, dude. Mick, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming by. Have a nice day. Thanks. What's up, ComicBook.com? BD here, kicking off San Diego Comic Con with the new. WWE Women's Tag Team Champion Chelsea Green. Chelsea, how are you feeling lately? Um, I mean, great. But this is just a, a walk in the park for me. You know what I mean? I was made, made to have this title sitting on my shoulder. It looks good. Looks good right there. It looks good. I ordered truffle mac and cheese last night to celebrate, so I am feeling great. That's amazing. Well, I mean, I actually would love, because this was just Monday night that you became champion. Congratulations. You earned it. I would love to hear about, you know, just leading up to that match, leading up to that moment, what it means for you, because I know 2020 happened, you know, there's, it was a long road to get here. The 2023 return at Royal Rumble was incredible, and now, like, you're on top of the world. Well, the funny thing is, is, you know, people think my, my story started at the Royal Rumble, but my story started in 2015 when I was not accepted onto Tough Enough. And then when I was eliminated from Tough Enough. And then when I wasn't given, you know, a job immediately within the company. And then I was. And so this this bumpy road goes way, way back. Um, and that's why I feel like I'm, I'm so ready for this. This is my moment. This is my time. I mean, it is. And I'm excited. So speaking of your time, it is time to elevate the women's tag division as a whole. I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. What do you guys think you can bring to the table? I mean, the spe spe saying, uh, speaking of elevating it. Uh, Chelsea. <laughs> And Sonya are amazing champions, so that's uh, it's it's uh, it's Chelsea's time. But uh, long may they reign. What a, what a seal of approval. He just said, "Long may they reign." I mean, listen. But how do you how do you think? Uh, what do you think it takes to elevate the championship and make it the, you know as prestigious as you want it to be? Mean as much as it should. Honestly, we're already doing it. Look at look at the way we look. Look at what we bring to the table. Star power. Period. Yeah. All these other teams, they go out there. They're they're mismatching. Um, they're not talking about their game plans, their strategies. That's not, that is not Sonia and Chelsea. We come prepared and we came prepared day one. One of our first tag matches ever is at WrestleMania. Who else can say that? And what a match it was. I was there. I mean, awesome. I almost won. So I just feel like we come with more history and, and more backstory and just the element of being prepared. Okay, but you bring up history. What happens now? Let's say, you know, somebody comes back to WWE, a former tag oh. partner, Carmella. I mean, what are we looking at is in the future if that happens? Hypothetically, of course. We're not looking. I'm not, I don't have a wandering eye like some of these 
women and men in the tag division. I am a loyal person to a fault, and so is my girl Sonia, and there will be no wandering eyes. Fair enough. All right, last thing. When I go to Comic-Con, I have... I'm looking at everything, though. I know you have your eyes on the belt in the future as a champion, but when you go to Comic-Con, there's a lot to look at. You're here for Mattel. There's going to be action figures. There's lots of stuff to collect here. What gets you going at Comic-Con? What gets you really excited? Have you been on the show floor yet? What gets me going is me. <laughs> so if I don't see an action figure or two of myself, we're going to have to speak to a manager. I mean, how long until you come with that belt as an action figure? How do we make that happen? Let's go. Oh, don't worry. I'm already on it. Chelsea, it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Good to talk to you, too.